Hey everybody, it's Wonderful Skiff. I'm back here with another Minnesota Power Rank player. Today we've got the King of Wizards. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. I actually forgot to do a little bit of research beforehand. Uh, I usually try to come in with at least the <laughs> where you're ranked, and I did not do that at all. Do not tell me until I look at it. You are number <laughs> seven you. in Minnesota. I was joking the whole time I had it written down. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so we're going to get right into this uh, right away. i just like to kind of jump right in. And first question I like to throw at you because maybe it distracts you enough to make me look good in game one. Your tag, kind of a little more out there than other tags. It's got three words instead of just, you know, one. <laughs> so yeah. where's, where's your tag come from? Um, so I, I, from what I understand, this is a pretty typical answer, but it's actually from Minecraft days. Um, <laughs> there was a okay. game called Wizards. Um that I used to play a lot. I was really into that game. Uh, it eventually got removed, but I was like really into the game where I'd like make content for it, uh, even though it was like really niche. Mm -hmm. um, like there was only, it, the community for it was really small, but it was pretty close together. It kind of reminds me of Lucas, if anything. Um, okay. And so I, I just I just kept the tag in the end, because I'm like, you know, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I was pretty attached to the tag. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so an another Minecraft answer, I guess. That's pretty cool. Damn, I hate this matchup. So, <laughs> so from there, uh, let's start talking about some of your strengths. Obviously, your strengths are pretty on uh, display here. I was only able to manage about 13% <laughs> that first time. So when you're playing against uh, a new person, what do you like to do, and uh, what type of advantages do you like to push? So, um, so basically my game plan when starting out is like, should I be camping this person or should I just be going all out aggressive? Mm -hmm. Um, and both of those, despite the game plan, my part of it is also trying to push my advantage as, as much as possible. So if I'm camping, I'm just sitting back, I'm doing F tilts, I'm doing double jump cancel zares. Um, I'm going to try and push my advantage as hard as I can. Um, nice. Um, so that, that's basically my mindset going in. I'm kind of thinking like, okay, can they deal with PK fire? If they can't, oh, well, I'm gonna be spamming it the entire time. Um, can they, are they like scared of like walking? You know, some people oh, okay. are really scared of that. Um, and Lucas, while he doesn't have a great walk speed, um, he has F tilt, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, F tilt's um, a very, very strong move. I've, I've seen it, uh, uh oh, quite a few times, and I hate it every time because it's so quick and it's just, it's such a strong yep. move in general. It really is. It's, it's honestly insane. If anything, I'd say it's underrated. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's funny how like the patch for P2 F tilt being nerfed was not too far off from Lucas F tilt being buffed. Um, it's almost like they replaced each other. Yeah, that's, that's kind of fair. I don't know if I'd consider it like pre-patch P2 F tilt. But it's definitely super. If it had the tripping uh, uh, properties, I guess I'd really agree with that. But it definitely oh, packs a yeah. punch. <laughs> yep, it, it kind of compensates for for the uh, for the range it has. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, Pichu's F tilt was definitely something else before. Oh, for sure. But yeah, as you mentioned though, like yeah, Lucas's uh, forward tilt is just such a strong move because like you can land like right into it, right? Like how how fast does it come out? Frame seven. Frame seven. That's absolutely crazy. So, uh, obviously, you've mentioned PK fire is kind of like a big part of that, uh, and it kind of determines. Uh oh, the character who's uh, that you're playing against kind of determines your aggressiveness factor. So, like, what other advantages are you trying to push? Like, once you start to figure out exactly like what your opponent's game plan is, like, what do you try to push onto them to try to really like force the game in your direction? So, um, usually, what I'm trying to push for is to get them to shield a lot. Okay. Um, you know, normally this would be seen as something bad, um, especially for characters that don't really have a lot of safe options or their only safe options are landing aerials. Um, and it, it feels a bit odd because Lucas is a bit of a slower character. His grab is not that great. But the thing is, is that his shield pressure is easily one of the best in the game. Everything is safe on shield. Like, oh, well, almost everything. But like my tilt attacks, my aerial attacks, all safe on shield. Um, and so I'm like trying to get them to shield even more and more because they're afraid of my like combo starters. Um, and so I'm like working to like catch their out of shield um, because uh, because my stuff is just so lagless on their shield. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That sounds about right. Yeah. I remember uh, there's a 
one of the guys I play with often plays Lucas here and there. And one of the things I definitely notice uh, when having to deal with this character is um, down tilt uh, on my shield very, very often. <laughs> Yep. is a problem move for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. It's, it's basically a Rob down tilt, except like like slightly worse. But in terms of like, um, it's the job that it does. It's pretty much the same. For sure, yeah. Uh, okay, so cool. So definitely got an idea of like, um, you know, some of the advantages that you like to push and, and what your strengths as a, as a player are in general. Actually, did we go over your strengths? You kind of went over them, right? Uh, I mean, the, the big thing is just I have a, I, I feel like I have a really strong advantage, um, and I can kind of read what you're going to do out of shield a, a good amount of times. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I thought we touched that on that briefly, but I guess, um, I don't know, I'm all over the place. I, I showed up late, and I've just been panicking the entire time on the way through. <laughs> I'm sure these up airs are not helping right now. Yeah. Yee. All right, so... Uh, from there, uh, I actually am a little bit curious because I think it's definitely a question that uh, gets asked here and there. And uh, so why Lucas over Ness? Oh, all right. Um, well, person, like if you're talking about viability wise, um, I, I would say that like Ness is better. Um, but they, they have pretty different play styles. Um, a lot of people find that Lucas's play is much more calculated, um, has a lot more depth to it. Uh, due to how technical he is. Yeah. Um, as for me personally, why I, I, I chose Lucas over Ness, um, I, I actually just mean Lucas because I love Mother 3. Um, okay. And I was not that big of a fan of Earthbound. So, it, oh, oh God. Yeah, you're done. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, so I wasn't as big of a fan as uh, um, for Earthbound. I, I wasn't, I didn't find that game as great. Um, so yeah, that's basically why I, I pick him instead. Okay, I've actually heard that uh, a few times. Um, in North Dakota, we have a Ness main, um, Jake Fox, who really, really loves Earthbound. And I don't think they enjoy um, <laughs> a Mother 3 as much, so Lucas kind of just doesn't matter to them. And I've yeah, also heard vice fair. versa, because we've got a Lucas a main or two out here as well. So I think it's just kind of a consistent thing then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh-oh. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. that. <laughs> okay, that was that was pretty sick. That was pretty sick. So, pushing forward, um, we went over your strengths a little bit. So, what do you think your weaknesses are as a player, or even if you want to get more specific, what do you think Lucas's big weaknesses are? Um, I'll, I'll start off with what I think of myself as as a player. What I'm weak to, um, I I do really bad in disadvantage. Um. That's also a little bit of a Lucas thing, but it's 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 definitely a personal thing as well. Where I just kind of like freak out, I'm like man, I don't know what to do anymore. Um, when it comes to like locals uh, or tournaments and stuff, nerves definitely get to me big time. Okay. Um, but I, I don't get tilted. That's that's kind of the interesting thing. Okay. I mean, I think nerves are something that you could definitely work on more. Getting tilted is something I feel like uh, really like messes up a lot of people. To be honest. Yeah. Not surprised. It's it, it's. Uh, it's difficult to deal with, from what I understand. Yeah. Um. Oh wait, big combo. Oh, okay. Stop it. <laughs> um. <laughs> in terms of like other things, I feel like I'm weak with. Um. I would say that sometimes I I do get too impatient. Um. Especially if I'm deciding like, okay, I want to play campy. Like I I don't commit to it as much as I should be. Uh -huh. I could definitely be doing it more. Um. And, uh, and yeah, and I, I think I, I also, I, I feel like I don't have a lot of experience as a player. Um, whether it be matchups or just playing against other strong players, I, uh, I'm pretty lit, like, the experience I get is usually, um, like, either within Minnesota or some close friends, uh, online. Okay. So, you think, uh, definitely an experience thing can kind of help with that for sure. And I, I agree, honestly, like, it, I think it's pretty noted that if you're able to play against a lot more people, you... You get that experience more because you, you, eventually you're gonna play someone who's very very talented as well and you kind of get over those nerves after a while and i think that kind of remains true for like not just smash but esports in general and sports as well yeah yeah that sounds about right because you're, you're just kind of like intimidated you're like i don't know what to expect but like you know experience solves that for you pretty pretty well um oh i uh, can't believe i got out of that to be honest <laughs> 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 Okay. Um, and I, I, I think, I think that covers what, what I felt were my biggest uh, weaknesses. But as far as Lucas goes, um, 
I, I would say that uh, his biggest weaknesses, uh, <laughs> ironically, it's, it's disadvantage is one of them. Yeah. Uh, um, he has trouble landing. He doesn't really have any hitboxes he can throw below you to land. There's down air, but it's, uh, first of all, kind of slow. Um, but second of all, the hitbox is kind of weak, or kind of small. Um, oh no. Oh. We take yeah. those. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he does fortunately have stuff like movement in the air uh, to kind of help alleviate alleviate the problem. Um, but since he's a floaty character, meaning that he you know he's staying in the air longer, um, it's it's kind of easy to react to where he's gonna go if if he's just in the air and you know wave bouncing shenanigans and whatnot. Ah, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> oh, dang, I missed. Um, I'd say another big thing, I guess this, this, is, this can kind of be encompassed with disadvantage. Uh, he has a pretty poor out of shield uh, in terms of speed. Uh, the fastest is uh, frame 10, which as far as ultimate goes, that's pretty below average. Yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. Nope. Oh, I thought I had <laughs> <laughs> Super good stuff. Um, Two combo, you say that's it, and then, and then the PK freeze hits. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like, um, in general, like outside of just a disadvantage, it seems like any character is able to put uh, like more pressure down than Lucas can, um, or at least just kind of get out of the pressure that Lucas can put down. Kind of is probably like the biggest weaknesses for the character, I would say. So like I would say like maybe a Joker probably can really really mess up Lucas. Yeah, um, anybody that has like a really good advantage that's focused on juggling specifically. Mm -hmm. um, is is really can be really good against Lucas, but there's this weird dynamic where it happens to be that a lot of those characters that can do that uh, don't really have um, massive disjoints that can get in. So, for example, you know Mario's the easiest example. You know he can be up airing the whole day, but the problem is I can just sit back and just going like this, and Mario okay. can't do anything. Huh. Um, so it's, I mean, if I lose. Uh, if I lose neutral once, I, I die, but I Lucas should not be losing neutral that much anyways uh, because of his disjoints and yeah. how good his ground game is. Same kind of goes for characters like Palu where we, we can uh, we can stay grounded pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Ah. Uh. No, I'm going to get this first star. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> No, I got this. I got. I mean, this. all focus and everything. Got the gamer lean. Uh oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> you're not gonna maybe? die. You're not gonna die. But you will right here. Okay, never mind. You're not gonna die. Yeah. But you will once you get back on the stage. I'm telling you. Quick back off. Uh oh. Okay. Hey, stop, stop, stop. It was a joke. It was a joke. Uh, it be good. Yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd oh. leave. <laughs> oh. Um. But yeah, it's it's just kind of interesting how it brings this like pretty interesting dynamic where it's like. You know, Lucas is trying not to lose neutral um, as much as possible, and he has a he has the tools to hold a strong neutral um, if he's if his if his game plan is to wall out. Um, but if he loses that, you know, he's he's done for basically. So it, you can almost see him as a as a glass cannon. Okay. okay. Whoa! What the hell? That's the first time I've seen that kind of interaction before. Yeah, that was uh, that was really interesting. I didn't even get hit by the hitbox. E Oh wow! No. Nope. Do again. Okay. There we go. Just. Oh no! Oh, I messed it up. God. I got so excited <laughs> to see the damage I was gonna put down. And yeah. I, just, <laughs> I mean, still like 28 percent. That that's still something. But. Uh. All right. So moving on from there. Um. Yeah. So obviously Lucas has some pretty uh, big weaknesses, and uh, you know isn't as easy a character to play as maybe Ness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, so, kind of, another thing I want to touch on Lucas, I wasn't going to make it back. Um, another thing I kind of want to touch on Lucas is, uh, so, oh, wow, hang on. I just had the question, and then I respawned, and I said, okay, next stock. <laughs> and then the combo <laughs> happened. Yeah, you just completely knocked the question out of my head. I'm not happy about this. Oh, okay, that's what I wanted to do. So, uh, in terms of notable Lucases, there's not many, right? So, out of yeah. curiosity, where do you think you put yourself in terms of, like, all Lucas's. Oh man, that's that's really tough. Um, I especially say it's hard to rank myself um, because I have not been able to go to like big tournaments. Uh, I've mostly just been, you know, been here in my local scene. Um, 
2020, uh, um, I, I know this goes for a lot of people, but 2020 was a year where like I'd be going to like Pound and Smash Con, had everything, oh. you know, planned out, but you know how it goes. Yeah, um, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'd say it's a bit unfair for me to rank myself right now, but I would say I am on the higher end of Lucas's for sure. Okay. Okay, that's good. It's like a, I, the only like other real notable Lucas that comes to mind right now is like WebJP, and he's phenomenal. He's he's a fantastic player. Yes, he's really really good. Um, he's definitely been growing, especially during quarantine. So that's really cool to see. We have another few. We have a few other Lucas mains who are pretty big. Uh, Mekos. Um, there's also Japanese players like Ryumina. Mm -hmm. Um and eight Mitsuki, uh and Hakadama, those are all they're all really good too. Um Oh and obviously Remy, who I believe got seventeenth at Genesis. Okay. So I I mean we don't really have that many high level Lucases, but I, I at least we got something. For sure, yeah, no, because uh, I think one of the more notable things is most recent juice box. Uh was it uh, Juice Box Seven? I think we actually had WebJP get fifth place there, which is kind of huge because the Juice Box has been like kind of like the like weekly Wi-Fi tournament, and like we've had like you know constantly Skittles, uh, Best Nest, Sonics, Epic Gabriel. They like all show up, and at one of the most stacked ones possible is when JP got like top five, which I think is just really, really, really good. Yeah, it was really impressive. I, I believe he lost to Leon and Skittles. Yes, yes, he did. So not bad losses at all, really. No, 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 really, no. The, I, honestly, a character, uh, one player who is honestly one of the best Wi-Fi players uh, could be PGR'd very soon, just with like how um, you know how they've been putting in time. And one of them is a pgr player and the best right. Bowser in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's that's so crazy to think. Like, I, uh, for, from like the Lucas community standpoint, like we're like I think we're all like very proud of him. Um, mostly because we don't really see results like this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it was really awesome to see that. For sure. Yeah. No. I'm like I don't know. It's it's crazy because I actually like watching Lucas. I remember like there was a combo video that went out recently. People were like, "Whoa, Lucas is actually pretty sick." And it's like, "Yeah, Lucas could do a lot of stuff because it's not Ness." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's basically it. Like a lot of people have Ness in mind whenever they're thinking of Lucas, even when they're playing the matchup. Actually, I I tend to see that. Oh wow. Okay, that was great. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like for example, um, w one easy one that I see whenever I'm playing the matchup and people are like, oh, I know this matchup, I played against Ness, um, is um, when I PK Thunder off stage to Edgeguard him, mm -hmm. um, they think that they can break the PK Thunder, uh, when in reality that's a Ness exclusive thing. Oh, wow. We take those. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like our PK Thunder for uh, for Lucas is transcendent compared to Ness's, which can be broken. And yeah. so, if anything, it helps us because they're busy trying to punch PK Thunder and just getting knocked farther and farther off stage, mm -hmm. um, while they're thinking it's the exact same matchup. So yes. that's fun to see. No, no, it's definitely something I've I've learned uh, a few times while playing Lucas as well. And I just want to reiterate, it's not that I'm saying all Ness players are like easy or boring, because like obviously you take players like Best Ness. Uh, and a few others who just put so much time into character and they know ins and outs and they can do a lot of really cool stuff. And the same things with Lucas. Like, Lucas, I mean, any character can be lame. And I've seen some lame Lucases. But, like, when you have someone who's, like, a dedicated character specialist, especially for someone as uh, crazy and has so much combo potential like Lucas, uh, there's always some cool things that can happen. Like, this is not cool. I hate this right now. <laughs> Please stop. Yeah, I'm like, what combo potential? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, I could be watching you do that to somebody else. I'm like, yo, this is sick. This is hype. But it's happening to me, and I just don't like yeah, it. Yeah, so. it's like, well, I guess I'll die now. Yeah, like, it's just, you, know, you just take that 50%. Oh, I don't like that at all. Yeah, just eat it. <laughs> wow. And just like that, it's it was almost dead even. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to see some Lucas players, uh, especially ones that are, like, trying to be technical. We, we we have a lot of Lucas players who um who don't really look into his tech, mm -hmm. um and then we have Lucas players who don't or, or who only look into his tech, mm -hmm. um and so it brings up this argument of uh, it's a pretty common one in the community. I'm sure it's it's common in a lot of other communities as well, where it's like fundamentals versus learning tech. Yeah. Um. And so with that in mind, um, we 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 bring up this discussion constantly, um. But it, it's hard to strike that middle balance where people are like, all right, I'm going to learn this tech, which actually is a pretty big time commitment, and I have to keep trying them in different matches. 
Um, but it might be worth it in the end. One huge example is uh, is double jump cancel Zare. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, this is a Lucas specific technique um, where he's basically canceling his double jump with the Zare. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hence the name. But um, but because of Lucas's weird double jump, it, it allows that to happen. Um, and it and it just allows for some really crazy combos. Um, uh, and at the same time, it's uh, it's extremely safe on shield. Uh, you're basically getting a landing Zare out of Rising, which is even crazier. Um, and it, it, it just has so many other perks. Some people use it for movement to confuse the opponent. Some people use it out of shield, which it's actually really good at, good for doing. Uh -huh. um, and, a, and a bunch of other stuff. It's, it's just a phenomenal move, or phenomenal tech. Yeah. And that's uh, the double jump cancel Zare is the um, the thing that I, you see Lucas do every once in a while where they're carrying somebody across the stage, right? Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure I was thinking of the same thing. Because it looked like it, but I just wanted to be sure. I don't want to talk. Uh, I mean, I'm all for being stupid and saying things I don't actually know. But, uh, you know, uh, right now I kind of want to take a little extra care to it because you know, I'm interviewing somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. Ooh, oh, man, I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, you're dead. That was like 60 to 70 percent. <laughs> oh, yeah, on town too. Man, that, that really packed a punch. For sure. So, okay, so moving forward, uh, definitely learning a lot here today. So that's that's kind of like one of the things I'm really trying to push forward here. And uh, I appreciate the amount of like information you were putting down. It, it, it has been fantastic so far. But kind of moving a little bit away from, you know, the Lucas portion, but focusing a little bit more on you. Like, so let's talk about your skill level. Obviously, we mentioned number seven in Minnesota. Minnesota is a very, very good region. Uh, you have people like Visitor, yourself, uh, and even Yeti, who once was number 34 in the world. Um, so, again, I know you haven't gone to many places outside of your local scene. But, like, where do you think you rank, I mean, obviously number seven, but let's say in a regional sense and possibly even in a global sense. Like, where, where do you think you stand? Oh, man, that's tough. That's tough. It's uh, it's easier to compare myself to other Lucases, but in, like, a worldwide sense. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could see myself, if I went to, for example, like, a major, I think I could see myself getting top 64. Okay. Um, especially with the proper practice put in. Mm -hmm. Um... Because definitely one of my weaknesses was, you know, the um, experience. But given that's there, um, I, I definitely feel like I have the ability to do that uh, fairly consistently. But maybe, you know, I haven't been to one, so maybe I might be, um, maybe I might be uh, shooting too high. But still, um, I, I feel like I could do well, uh, especially okay. given how I was able to do pretty well in Minnesota. Um, this is, I was ranked uh, on my second season in Minnesota. I only started competing last year in February at a regional called uh, Be Mine. Okay. Um, and so given given that, I, I, I feel like I could do pretty well in a, in a global sense. It's just um, getting the experience, really. Yeah. Okay. I think I think that's fair. I mean, again, you're number seven in Minnesota, right? And Minnesota's already like a power pack scene in general. Like, uh, there's there's a lot of very talented players. Granted, it's not like, I mean, everybody knows Yeti, right? And then when it kind of moves down from there a little bit, it kind of gets a little bit lesser known. But still, to make a PR in that type of scene, I still think, you know, says something about the type of player you are. So I, I think that's right. definitely reasonable to think. Yeah, Minnesota's definitely a very strong street region. Um, and from what I've heard, it's also pretty underrated as well. Uh, I would probably say that because, I, I mean, yeah, we all, we're all we all aware of Yeti, like I just said. But, like, kind of when it goes down from there, you know, it's you have one PGR player. Or one player yeah. who made PGR, at least. So, yeah, it kind of does disappear from there. And I think this is kind of like a Midwest thing in general. Where, like, we have those players who are super, super talented. And, you know, that everybody knows. And then kind of when it dips down from there a little bit, you're kind of like, okay, well, who's everybody else in these cities? So I think right. that just kind of like it makes sense because like uh, Nebraska themselves too. Nebraska is very, very underrated and they have a lot of very, very uh, solid players there as well. Yeah, that sounds about right. Ooh. So, okay. I think uh, top six were a major. I think that's definitely something that you could definitely do. So from going on from there, where do you want to be? Like by the end of like Ultimate's lifespan? Huh. Um, it, it's, it's pretty weird. I'm, I, uh... I, I think definitely best Lucas in the world is a is a big goal for me, um, or at the very least, um, 
that I'm helping push the Lucas meta a lot, because I, I do like to lab a lot um, okay. for Lucas. Uh, so pushing that meta would be a, a huge goal um, goal for me personally. Um, but yeah, best Lucas is definitely the biggest one. Okay, I, th I think that's that's definitely uh, a fair goal to aspire for. And like, the thing is, is like labbing, like you're always going to need those types of people for your character and stuff like that. Like look at the Ganondorf meta. Like Ganondorf would honestly probably just continue to be super, super awful. If you didn't have people like Rickles and like MGK who are like pushing <laughs> the envelope. Yeah, yeah. No, they lab like crazy. It's, yeah. it's really it's really cool to see the different ideas that they bring to the table. Especially on Ganondorf, which like just feels really weird. Yeah, it's like they, they make it so like they could play against people who obviously are playing matchups that could even be argued for like plus three or whatever but like the way they play and the like the pressure they put down and and figuring out what each character you know does against Ganondorf and stuff like that it's it's kind of crazy so I honestly I commend you for for being a labber for your character because a lot of people don't put in that work yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay All right, we're not gonna end it there but I'll get it on nope not that Okay, but this one... Oh, I, I don't like that one at all. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Oh, never mind. Oh. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, we're not going to kill you quite yet. Well, right there we will. <laughs> oh, yep, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Okay, so going forward from there, uh, we went over your game playing style, your current skill level, weaknesses, strengths, um, a whole bunch of stuff. So let's talk, talk about some of your like recent results. Now this can be online, offline. I mean, it doesn't have to be recent results, but just results in general. Like, what are some results that you are like genuinely proud of? Huh. Um. In terms of offline, that I remember, um, locals especially, where I would just like hold really close sets or games. Um, with with Yeti, where I would be like, you know, taking it to game five, taking the game three. Um, they would, th those would be like amazing moments um, because it always felt like really, really close. Um, and you, especially with like all the all the Megmans there, kind of helping with experience to it, it, it felt great that like over time I'd see that get the games closer and closer. Yeah. Um, I think just rising to PR in general was also pretty... I was pretty happy with that. Um, I don't know if that counts as a result on its own. Um, but that that was a goal I had. Um, in terms of Wi-Fi, I don't really participate in Wi-Fi tournaments. Okay. So I, I don't really have much there. Oh, I, hit I, know, I know especially now it's pretty big. Yeah, Wi-Fi is kind of like the only way to really play at the moment. Unless you're yeah. just kind of getting some friends together. Or being stupid. Which are, yeah, which or are being possible. stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but yeah, that's. Oh, but yeah, that's about it. Okay. Uh, I think that's that's still really good. Obviously, if you're able to kind of compete with Yeti, you're still kind of competing with one of the best in the world. Like e even though he didn't technically make uh, the PGR this time around, like he's he was what in the area 51 um, category, I believe. Yeah, I think I think this PGR season he was. Yeah. So even then, like you're still competing pretty well with one of the best players in the world. So I think that kind of like really puts it in mind, you know, like, you know, that that's a good result. <laughs> I, I don't think that could, anybody could take that away from you. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's it's uh, it was always the funnest moments where I would like post the stream link in the chat or in like, for example, like the Lucas Discord, uh, and they're all just kind of like watching and. Um, you know, like giving me notes after, like, how did you fall for that, like, second up air, or, you know, something like that. But it, it would always just be, like, really cool to see. Yeah, that that's, that's cool. Let me get this, uh, never mind. You're not going to win. That down air? <laughs> yeah, I want the down, I want the spike, but you know what? That's fine, too. Uh oh. Ooh, oh, that thought, was a little scary. Won't lie. There. Oh, what? there we go. Okay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> right into my, right into the rope snake. <laughs> there is no joke getting the rope snake. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, people Whoa, don't usually okay. uh, spot dodge that. All right, so moving on from there, what are some moments that stick out? Like, obviously you said that you haven't really been competing for too long, right? Yeah. So, even in your short career, what are some moments that really stick out? With, uh, you know, since, since you've been kind of involved in the scene and just in Smash Bros. in general? Well, I, I think definitely the, my first tournament really st stuck out to me. Um, actually, uh, it, 
visitor uh, who you interviewed about a week ago, mm -hmm. I, I think, right? Or two about, days? About um, roughly, yeah. So he, I actually played him in my uh, in my first tournament. Uh, I made it to top 25 of the regional there. I think it was like out of like 300 or so. Um, and I lost to him at the end. Uh, but it was really interesting because I wasn't really keeping track of like how the tournament was going. Mostly I was just confused what was going on. Um, but uh, it was it was just really cool. Like w w when we started our set, um, I was asking him, you know, like, uh, by the way, what's going on right now? Like, where are we? Um, I was thinking like maybe we were uh, top like uh, 64 or something like that. He's like, oh wait, we're we're top 25 right now. Um, and it was it was really weird because my friends were also there and they were just like, huh, you're already in top 25? Um, oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was really really cool to see. Um, and I, I remember that moment pretty well because it's just kind of like you know it it still takes me by surprise. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, uh, it was like your first tournament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your first yeah, tournament uh, making top 25. I'd say that's uh, kind of wild. That's not something you usually hear about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I was definitely really proud of that moment. Um, and then, you know, like also just like I, I started attending locals then in like June. Um, so w when I did that, it, it was just interesting seeing like the same people I saw in the regionals. Um, who I probably would have lost to, or I saw them in like top eight or something like that, and then I'm like able to, you know, keep up with them or even beat them. Um, so it was just, you know, it, it's it's more like a blur rather than a specific moment. Yeah. Um, but it's just seeing how far you come. Okay, that's pretty cool. And for those who aren't aware at the moment, uh, your bird was started making a lot of noise after this question. <laughs> so, uh, what's your bird's name? My bird's name is Mango. Mango. Uh, okay. Yeah, we got him about a few months ago. It's, it's kind of a bit funny. We named him Mango just because he looks like one. Mm -hmm. um, but it just so happened like a month after we got him, he started really liking eating mangoes. Um, <laughs> so it just kind of worked out. What kind of bird is he? He's a lovebird. He's a lovebird. So he loves okay. to make a lot of noise too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell. He's definitely made a lot of noise so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's so yeah, cool, you, you guys get to hear his commentary then. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. I keep forgetting I have this stage on here. I just did this yesterday or the other day with Welfare Pickles, and I was like, oh, I gotta take this off, and nope, I just, I keep forgetting. <laughs> nah, nah, this, it's okay. This is a great stage. I, I, I remember when people were joking around legalizing this because it's just like a bigger smash bill, but like, yeah. with a ceiling. Um, it's definitely a fun stage. Like, I still it, do like it. The music in, on here is really good. Yeah, it, it is. You, you can't go wrong with ARM. I mean, you can. No one plays it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. In terms of music. In terms of music. Oh, yeah. In terms of music, for sure. Uh oh. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> Um, But yeah, this kind of reminds me. I, I really love playing casual games, too. Um, oh, I'm a big fan of those things. Yep. Oh, my God. Uh, and the Arm Stadium definitely does not disappoint in terms of that. It's uh, it's definitely a really fun stage to play on with hazards. Oh, for sure. Um, Because I think we... Me and some friends, we messed around before. We were doing just like four player free for alls with items, and we had this stage come up. And I think I was Zelda, and I just kept hitting people with the jump pads and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> it, it just made me laugh because they're like, What am I doing here? And it's like, Well, yeah. you're, you're losing. <laughs> but it's almost really satisfying to hit him with those pads because it's like doing like, I don't know, like 30% or something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then you deal with Zelda, so you get launched with a pad, and then she tries. I just tried getting like teleport shenanigans going on. It was, it was a fun time. I really oh, do yeah. like this stage, and it kind of upsets me that um, the ceilings are really, you know, even there and kind of, like, ruin the rest of the, the stage in general. But we don't yeah. need another super wide stage. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. We, we have enough of those for sure. Um, but I will say comboing off of that top ceiling um, is something really satisfying. Oh, I can imagine. Uh oh. Uh, nah, I'm not going to make it. That's yeah. Fine. So... Yeah, so we went over basically all the questions I really like to uh, to hit on here. So kind of from here, I want to open the floor. Is there any like sort of topics or um, just anything in general, something you're passionate about, something you hate that you kind of want to talk about? Um, well, that's tough. Yeah, I think I forgot, oh, I forgot wait, to really throw this your way before we actually started, and I've been doing that a couple times lately. <laughs> kind of messed yeah, no, that's up. fair. <laughs> um. 
Well, I mean, I always love talking about Lucas, whether it be like, uh, you know, where I think he is, like on a tier list or, uh, where do you or think how, he is? how he should be performing. Um, I know a lot of people love to say that he's he's high tier, um, especially for his for his really uh, his he has really good strengths. Um, I mean, we saw that he can kind of combo, you know, but um, he he has you know really good disjoints. Um, I, obviously, the kill throws as well. Um, but it's it's just usually I I notice that uh, a lot of people find that um, find that his strengths outweigh his weaknesses a lot of time. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I feel like a lot of... Usually it's because of uh, matchup inexperience. That's that's actually really helpful for Lucas specifically. Um, matchup inexperience um, is what, what can really help us get away with a lot of stuff, which is uh, which is great sometimes because uh, seeing the opponent's expression when you just hit him with like the craziest thing yeah. um, is really fun to see. Um... Oh my god, these revenges! Yeah, I forgot that Ariel uh, Lariat is bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like, you know, usually when you start, when people start learning, like, the matchup even more and more, you're noticing, okay, you know, they're SDIing my stuff. I'm not able to hit the same amount of things that I normally would. Um, or other things where uh, I'm not falling for that revenge. <laughs> 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 I had you on the ropes a little bit. <laughs> there you go. I see. I see what the plan is. You're trying to distract. <laughs> um. Uh. But but yeah, it's 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 a lot of stuff that you can uh you can figure out with the matchup over time. So for example, uh, I think I think when you when you had your interview with with Visitor, he made it very clear um how much he uh he just likes Lucas. Yeah. Um, is that you? That, that that's me. <laughs> that's, that's me right there. I am. I think I'm the only Lucas in Minnesota. Okay. Um, and you just happen to be the cause of all his hate and frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's basically what's caused his Twitter to be partially what it is um, <laughs> ever since I joined. Um, but but yeah, like you know, like he's definitely really grown as a player. Um, you know, learning the matchup just you know. Getting counterplay down, all of that, um, and it just kind of shows how, like, you know, you learn the matchup more and more, it, it starts to become way more manageable. But I, I don't think he will drop his hate for Lucas, which is completely valid. Yeah, <laughs> Lucas can do some pretty crazy stuff. Like right now, I am just struggling to take this stock, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay, that was straight off the top. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's really cool to see players learn the matchup, but at the same time, it's also really scary. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I can imagine how that is. I feel like it's the uh, same thing for like a, um, what is that? My doubles partner plays Bayonetta. And you would think that people already know how to play against Bayonetta because of um, how dominant she was in Smash 4. And she's, um, I feel like she plays very, very similarly. I mean, granted, it's not as, she has much, she's not as much of a bully anymore. But like people still have matchup experience against that character because just no one plays her anymore. It's kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of wild to me. So Yeah, it's just crazy. You know, like... Yeah. Like, they refuse to SCI sometimes, uh -huh. and it's just kind of like, oh, I'm going to hit all my Smash 4 combos, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, you can definitely see a lot of characters that, that, uh, that I guess you could consider it a strength and a weakness. Mm. Um, where matchup experience can definitely kill you sometimes, uh, or help you a lot. For sure, yeah. I, I think that's just kind of like... That's just the heart and soul of like low tiers and bottom tiers in general, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. But I, I mean, there's also, to be fair, there's also like top tiers, like for example, Shulk, who, be, because there's like rarely any of them, a lot of people don't have the matchup experience for him, which is kind of interesting to see because he's so good, but he's also a really niche character, so that that makes sense. Oh yeah, no, for sure. And I, I mean, it's, I think it's just any character that kind of takes a little bit more thought than I press forward and press A button. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna see less of them, regardless of how good they are, and it's just you know, Shulk just happens to be one of those characters, despite how good that character actually is. Right. Yeah, that sounds about right. I hate how far that snake can go. Yeah, it's it went from like I'm pretty sure it was one of the worst tethers in Smash Four, and then it just became one of the best. Um, so that that's fun to see. Um, 
in addition to like just the Zare being really, really good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that just kind of helps the character in general as well. You know, uh, having having a tool like that, especially a tool that can carry an opponent like so far across the stage, is just such a big deal. Yep, it just combos so much. Uh, it's it's actually really good with dealing with projectiles, uh, which a lot of people are get pretty surprised by. Uh, mostly really? because Zare clanks out projectiles uh, after a certain percent range. Hmm. Um, yeah, as long as they're less than like 16% or so, uh, Zare will just beat it out. Um, so like for example in the Mega Man matchup, that's huge. That's huge because uh, you, you can just Zare through his lemons and Metal Blade and you don't really have to worry that much. And it's also like super active, so you're not, you're not, it doesn't have to be really precise timing. Well, that's that's pretty good. So that kind of gives you. Oh, ah, no! I can't believe I missed. Oh my it. god! Give me like a heart attack right there. <laughs> so it kind of gives you something to deal with, like the more physical uh, projectiles. Then, so that's that's kind of neat. Cause yeah. you already got your magnet, so it's like, right. not like you're worried about energy projectiles at all. Yeah, exactly. So kind of covers both of those most of the time. So that's always nice to see. And then on top of that, um, oh my god, wow. Um, <laughs> on top of that, I you got a reflector with F Smash too, which a lot of people tend to forget, which is pretty pretty funny. Um, because like let's say I'm playing like the King K Rule matchup, uh, he just keeps throwing out Crown. He completely forgets that Lucas has a uh, oh wow uh, that Lucas has a uh, reflector. Um, and again, it's it's partially a matchup and experience thing too, but oh no. Oh, uh, I'm not about. I thought you were gonna dare me. I'm like, oh, I'm dead. No, I was gonna go for uh, for up special, but I turned it around out of habit <laughs> to grab the ledge. <laughs> I was I was ready to just suicide <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had this. Well, I, yeah, you had the stock lead and everything. It was worth it. Um, here we go. Uh, Incineroar got buffed this most recent patch. Yeah, he did. Uh, his up smash got a little bit of a buff. Uh, he acts out of revenge faster. Uh, his grab and side B grab faster now too, and I think he had something else. It was okay. They were nice buffs, but they weren't. They didn't quite address the problems. For this I'm character. guessing speed is the biggest one, speed right? Speed is such a problem, and I wouldn't mind his speed so much if his recovery wasn't so gimpable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that he, sounds about right. He has the benefit of being able to mix up his recovery a little bit, but like. It's not much if he if he's super slow. Like, if they just buffed his speed a little bit, I'd be so okay with his recovery not being as great as it is. Uh, yeah. I don't even need the run speed that much, but like air speed, ugh, that would be such a godsend. And it, it's just so weird because they're like buffing the moves that already make him really good. Yeah. Like, like his moves were already like awesome, you know? Yeah, like F his, tilt was uh, amazing, down tilt, his, upset. Um, the, how fast he can act out of revenge now is actually kind of gross. I'm gonna be honest. Like here, uh, go ahead and give me a hit. Oh, okay, we're really gonna change oh. this up. Okay, ready, and, ah, wait, 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 all right, okay, and okay. go! All right. All right. Ah, I'm trying! <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, wait, that, was no. my, that was my fault. Okay, okay, wait, wait, go wait, ahead, go I'll ahead. I'm gonna fully charge this. I'm gonna fully okay. charge I don't know what the timing is! I don't know what the timing is! <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. I'm fully, ah, fully charging it. Ah, <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't quite get it, but. <laughs> <the> <laughs> okay, we're trying to right. try it one more time. One more time. All right, all right. I, I'm fully charging it. All right. And ha! Ha! Okay, there we go. Like it was, it was, it's a little quicker, but the point is, is uh, yeah, it's 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 gross. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm guessing uh, maybe if I tech in place, uh, you'd be able to confirm it into grab. Oh wait. Oh sorry. Are we still doing that? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, I, <I'm, laughs> I thought you were just trying to get revenge, anyways. I'm like, oh. Okay. I mean, I'm, I am going to just get revenge. That's just something that's going to happen to me. So I mean, ugh. but yeah, I'm no. I'm going to charge um, it for longer to throw you off. <laughs> so like, there's a like there's a possibility of me like hitting it, like getting the revenge, and while you're still like floating away, um, I can still like like run at you and grab you before like you even land like even at lower percentages it, it's actually like really gross how it works sometimes i just happen wow. to be a uh, very um slightly maybe maybe slightly above average player and i mean average by like average player i don't mean like average good or anything like that <laughs> <laughs> i mean to be fair you, you hit that downer that one time and that that felt like like pgr level uh, i wouldn't say that uh <laughs> i am not a pgr level player 
But the dare is definitely satisfying. Uh, a spike in general, I don't care what the character is, is a satisfying move. Yep, yep, no, that sounds about right. So, uh, going from here, I think we kind of covered a lot. We, we got to talk a lot about Lucas, which is something that you seem to be very passionate about, which is great, man. I love it when people actually love their characters. Um, yeah. I feel like it's something that is uh, seen a lot more, obviously, in low and mid-tier mains, and that's not a stab at high-tier mains, because I know, basically, if you're a Shulk main, it's because you love Xenoblade. Like, there's yeah. only, that's, like, the only way. <laughs> Yep. And, th and then there's other mains too. If, if you love your character, that's great. And it's definitely good to see that you are a character loyalist who absolutely loves everything about the character. And that goes uh, all the way back to the games as well. Right. Um, do, do you feel like you're, you're like that for Incineroar as well? Uh, no. Well, I mean, now, yes. Uh, but at first, I was like, when they when they first announced Incineroar, I was like, okay. Because like, when they first announced Incineroar in like the Sun and Moon games, I was like, this character is kind of dumb. Um, but I'm like, he's based on a wrestler, so that's kind of cool. And then I was like, you know, it's whatever. And then they added him to this game, and I saw how much personality they gave him as a character. And that just made, like, such a big impact on me. I yeah. love how much... I don't care if the character's bad. Um, he's got so much personality in him. And yep. I, I feel like he's got a lot of sauce. I don't care what anybody else says. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. All right, you're just emphasizing your point right now. I, I see yeah. you. I lost, uh, but at what cost? <laughs> I, I think most people in the beginning just saw him ha as the uh, Grinch leak deconfirmer. Yep. Because um, I, I know that was definitely big. Like, they saw, like, Ken in the beginning of the trailer, and they're like, oh, my God, the Grinch leak is real. Yeah. Uh, and then you just see Incineroar, and everybody was like, aw. But, um, <laughs> like, the character that he evolved to be is just really awesome. Yeah. Um, he, he lots quickly, of personality, like you said. He quickly shot up from one of my... I want to say least favorite starters, but like a starter I just didn't care about to like a top 10 Pokemon for me in general. I, yeah. I, I just love the dude. I love him. Yeah, he's he, he's really cool. Um, I was a big fan of Rowlet when, uh, when, uh, er, what, what's the final evolution? Decidueye. Decidueye. Um, I was a big fan of him and I was hoping that he would be coming in this match because I, I thought his design was really cool, you know? Yeah, um, I guess, but I, I feel like he'd play maybe a little bit too much like Pit. Like, obviously, they try to change him up a bit, but like, you know, a multi jumper with a bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds about right. Yeet. Oh, man. Oh, you actually got through that. <laughs> but yeah, I think the situation would have been cool. I'm honestly, like, super okay with them adding as many Pokemon as they want to this game. So I think there's a lot of unique Pokemon, and there's there's so many moves in general. I think they can make a lot of unique characters. So Yeah. I'm cool uh, And there's also a lot of, like, types that we just don't have. I, I'm pretty sure we don't have a single... Well, Incineroar might be the only dark type, and I think Squirtle's the only water type. Yeah. No, so... Greninja. Oh, oh, right, Greninja, yep. Yeah, no, there, uh, there's a lot of types that haven't touched yet. Or grass? Because I think Ivysaur might be the only one. Ivysaur is uh, the only one. That type. Yeah. Like, so honestly, there's definitely a lot of areas that aren't explored. Yeah. Like, honestly, I wouldn't even be opposed to, like, having at least one a gen. Because we don't have one from Gen 3. Obviously, we have Gen 4 because Lucario. But Lucario is basically a second Pikachu anyway. Yep. Oh! <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, and... You know, it's it's cool that we got like characters like Mewtwo back. Um, so I guess that was more of a Smash Four thing when we we got him back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I definitely think the Pokemon series could be more explored. Honestly, uh, I'd be down with just like a uh, Pokemon Smash Bros type deal. Uh, just oh yeah, just a roster full of Pokemon, but just plays like Smash Bros. Just give me that. Pokemon just excited. doesn't cut it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we also have uh, a, a shitload of people from Gen 1 as it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. Get rid of, um... Get rid of, uh... Mewtwo. Pikachu. Get rid of Mewtwo. Uh, make it make it just, um... Just Charizard again. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, I think, I think that kind of... Because Jigglypuff's going to be here because Jigglypuff is in the first game, so I don't see yeah. that character ever leaving. It, it's kind of funny how that's, like, the main reason that Jigglypuff just stays around. Um, yeah. Oh man, you're really going for that. Of course, I'm. I'm, I'm going to. I'm, this is what I do. I make bad decisions. It's why I will remain a low-level player forever, <laughs> and I'm okay with that because I feel like I can talk well. <laughs> hey, but but when you hit that dare, 
then you become a high level high level player. At least for that second, it feels like. Oh that. yeah, for that second, I'm the greatest player in the world. And yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how it will remain always. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, we kind of went over a bunch of stuff. I don't, I don't mean to cut you off or anything like that. Uh, it's just we are also approaching the 50 minute mark, and I feel like if we get into another conversation, that's like another potential 15 minutes, <laughs> and we're gonna cut yeah. to the hour mark. Um, but yeah, no, uh, absolutely great having you on. I really appreciate the uh, energy. And I think that's a good place to end it there too. <laughs> but I really appreciate the energy <laughs> you come on. I uh, really appreciate the energy you bring in. Um, you're definitely very passionate about your character and passionate about the game, it seems. And I, I think that's just something that I think the community needs a lot right now. It's just these types of people. And I think you fit that mold perfectly. So thank you for being who you are. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for letting me on, too. This was a great opportunity. Yeah, no, for sure. Just thanks for coming on, man. It, that's kind of one of the things I've been really happy about is just some of the people who are just so willing to come in here and give me about an hour of their time just, just to talk. And, you know, just, just let them talk about themselves. I think people just like to talk about themselves. So it kind of works out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, who, who wouldn't give up that opportunity? But, yeah, you're right. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah, from there, I think we don't have anything else to really talk about, uh, unless there's any final words you'd like to throw out for yourself. Any shout outs? Um, that, that's, that's about it. I mean, shout out to the Lucas community for being awesome. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Okay. Good stuff. And, uh, once again, this is a King of Wizards, number seven in Minnesota, Lucas Main. Fantastic player and fantastic person. If I, if I do say so myself. Uh, once again, thank you for coming on here. And everybody else, uh, be good to each other, buds.